Well, there was a good reason I didn't bring you your videos on Saturday. I had a sneaky suspicion that if we got the proper trip we wanted for White Tiger, that he could get to the winner's circle. In fact, I told a couple of people that. It's not something I wasn't going to say, hey, White Tiger can win. Anybody that follows White Tiger knows if you put him in that position, in the right group of horses, more times than not, you're going to go to the winner's circle. And any race he ever won at two, he's a hunter. You know, that's how he is. Any race he won at two, third over, in the flow, and attack down the lane. And that is his MO. Uh, he can win in other ways. He's won on the front end. He's won from the pocket. But that's him in a nutshell. And, you know, that was a frustrating thing when I talked to Tim. It certainly wasn't Tim's fault. And it's hard. It's not anybody's fault. I know the horse because I've been around him his whole life. But he, when you move him, he's got such a turn of foot. He's like a pacer. He, he, he lulls you to sleep because... In his last two races, he cleared to the front quickly and then fizzled out in the last 16th, the last 100 yards, whatever. It's not that he's bleeding or he's sick or anything like that. It's just not his trip, right? And you could say, I guess a, a pessimistic person could say, well, he's not a fighter. Okay, he's not a fighter. Lots of horses aren't fighters. But I'll tell you what he can do. He can sprint. And if you use him in the way I used him last night, as I said, in the right setting, he's going to get you the winner's circle almost every single time. So... I certainly didn't want to pull my pants down and send a message out to everybody and say, hey, White Tiger can win Saturday. But I suspected he had a pretty good chance. So for those of you who knew him and knew that, that I was going to drive him in the way he needed to be driven, and by all means, don't lead this to believe that I'm putting, making a dig on any other drivers. I'm not. He's a, he's a hard horse to drive because he, he'll, allow you, he'll allow you to overdrive him. I got some new sunglasses. They look a lot like my driving glasses. Oh, well. Um, he'll allow you to overdrive him and put him in a bad spot. And I don't think that's him being a, a bad horse. I think he he uh, he's just quick, right? And he's fast. Put it that way. He's fast, but he's not the deepest horse. I mean, most horses, he's not a world champion. I guess technically he was. He still is, I guess. But he, um, you just got to drive him accordingly. And I think it was as frustrating for me as it was for Tim in Pennsylvania to say to people, hey, you can't drive him like that. And they drove him like that anyway because he feels like he feels like you can. When you move White Tiger and he comes with that authoritative rush on the outside, you feel like he's going to clear to the front, drive away, and, and throw another quarter and 27 and a piece at them. And someday he might. But that's not today. It wasn't last week, and it won't be next week. So White Tiger, I uh, was so happy... To, to get him back home and to race him and then come up with a win. I felt a little bad for Tim because really he's the same horse he was when he left Pittsburgh. He just got driven in a different way, had a longer stretch, and had different horses to race against. And the reason we didn't bring him home a little bit earlier was he had too much money in his program, and I didn't want to race him against the horses he has to race against next week. So, <clears throat> so um, I was so, so happy with with White Tiger and, and the way he raced last night. And happy for Amy. Amy loves this horse. And she takes care of him every day under Harry. And just just loves him to death. And I was very, very happy that he got the job done. Cruising in style. Come up with a huge, huge race this week. Finishing third. Narrowly beaten 52 and a piece. Andrew's just doing a tremendous job with this horse. And he's racing good. Very, very happy for the people that own him. Um, it was funny because uh, a couple of the clients that own him are like, Hey, you know... His earning potential is getting close, you know, and I don't believe that. I think the horse can graduate into a into an open level horse at wherever, Ohio, Philadelphia, Illinois, anywhere. I think he'll be a good horse. I mean, he's never really had a lameness issue in his life. He's never had any issues of any kind uh, other than mental, <laughs> mental issues sometimes. But uh, the great thing about the stable was they were allowed to, they, they it, we gave them the opportunity to put their, their shares up for sale and owners, current owners of Cruising in Style bought them out, which was good, right? That's the civil way to do it. It's so good because the people that got out, they're happy, right? They got what they wanted and the people that stayed in, they're happy. They got a bigger portion of their horse. So uh, especially at Christmas time, it was a, a wonderful gift to the people that wanted to stay in there and hang in there with Cruising in Style. Uh, very, very happy for them and for the horse. He's proven that the model we put forward, I'm not talking about buying and training and everything. 
but the plan we put forward for our three-year-olds coming four worked at least for him and uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later I had a, a really uh, good conversation I'll talk about it right now because he's next was yes yes his head uh, he's been the hottest horse in the barn uh, for months and uh, has just been a, a real real good racehorse cruising in styles grinding out money in a different location right he's in he's in the classes that yes would face next year and um, not to take anything away from cruising because he's had a great year but yes has had an absolutely tremendous and very uh, fortunate uh, we've been very fortunate in the in the the fourth quarter so to speak of uh, 2019 with yes and a lot of people had asked, what's next, what's next, what's next? I messaged Irv and he said, well, he fits that class one more time and then he has to almost win the Open. And I said, well, is there anywhere else to race him? Because there seems to be a lot of classes for a lot of horses uh, in the new year. Now, he hasn't got back to me. Um, but what I wanted to do was the same with all of our three-year-olds turning four. I want to race them right up into March and then I want to stop them for two months. And the important reason for that is I don't want to race against that age company in the in the heat of the start of the summer when everybody's starting to really roll I want to give our horses two months to mature fill out a little bit and then after that takes place bring them back have them ready for August and then race them on their own schedule so if that horse that's ready in the middle of August or August 1st or end of August is is ready to go and races right through till January or right through till next year at, at, that, at what point they need a rest they'll tell us at that time it isn't a scripted time off uh, for them, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. So I had messaged her back and I said, listen, Irv, you've raced a thousand yeses. You know, you, you world-class trainer. Uh, this is what I had laid out for the horse. You know, race him there. If he can't find a race for him, we'll find a race for him. But race him till March, rest him, and then let him start his four-year-old season later in the summer where we can look at how the landscape looks, right? We can see it. You know, don't, you're not going to race against the best four-year-olds. So hide from them. If that means we have stake races to race in, great. If it means we race in Philadelphia one week and um, you know the Poconos the next week or the Meadowlands or Yonkers or here or wherever, then so be it. But just let him mature into a horse. And for the first time in my life, from opening the stable.ca with you, um, I got a different perspective of horse racing, right? I think yes is going to be a tremendous, maybe a world-class five-year-old. And that's hard to say when he's only three. I think we're going to use his four-year-old year to put some money away and turn him into the horse that I believe he can become at five. And it's it's a little bit of, a, I guess, a European uh, train of thought, but I've never, I've never thought that way before, right? I've never had a chance to. But looking at what yes means to us, a horse like cruising in style, what he means to us, I think these horses are going to get better and better and better. We just need to manage them and race them appropriately. I think all of our trainers have done a tremendous job and uh, I'm waiting to hear back from Irv, but I believe in my mind uh, that's the right course of action. You know, maybe he doesn't get to March. Maybe he's tired. Maybe we don't have a class for him over the winter and we have to stop with him. Then so be it. But I would like to race him right up to March, give him those two months off, see what kind of four-year-old we have in yes. Next is Oso Pine, another perfect example. For those of you, for those of you that are in the Ontario area uh, and want to come out, Come out, do yourself a favor, come out, walk down the alleyway of the horses Oso Pine is racing against. Look at how they're built, look at their size, their girth, their muscle mass, and then look at him. And you'll see what I'm talking about, is Oso Pine looks like a three-year-old, because he is. A lot of these aged horses look like bigger, stronger horses, because they are. He's racing against horses that are stronger, bigger, and better. Uh, are supposed to be better than him and he's doing well and this is the maturity of these horses we see they're three and they've raced all these times and stakes and now they're race horses no they're not they're not even close to race horses they're babies that have graduated into the end of their sophomore season and now they have a whole world ahead of them and um Oso pine is no different than yes uh white tiger stonebridge zembo we'll talk about him Stonebridge Simba also. Management. I mean, we've built something difficult to build, and we've done it in a, a relatively affordable way, in a responsible way. You know, we didn't go out and spend $250,000 on, on yearlings, or one yearling, and then, you know, expect it to turn into a world champion, wait for that to happen, and go home and, you know, check the bottom line every night. We haven't done that. 
what we've done is taken uh, an idea, taken a thought process, turned it into an entire stable, an entire model, and let it grow. For those of you out there that, that believe what we've done is a failure, I don't know why you're watching this video. <laughs> For those of you, <laughs> look, at, look at Dad coming. This is curbside. I much appreciate it. I asked for it on toast. This is a bagel. They stole me too. Uh, it's okay. I'll allow it for now. Scoot along now. <laughs> Big Fred's still up. Uh, so I got a toast sandwich. Toast, toast, and cheese, and bacon. Oh, looks good. Um, for those of you who are, who are uh, loving the ride so far, uh, we obviously appreciate this. This is Christmas season. This is my favorite time of year. As I said to Amy, I'm going to wait till noon and go to the mall. Um, I don't even have to buy anything. I just, you know, I like, I like, I said to somebody yesterday, how can you possibly want to be in the malls at Christmas? I said, do you know how hard it is to find a large group of people that are all happy at the same time? <laughs> it's almost impossible. Sure, you get people that are running around and trying to buy stuff, but for the most part, people are in a good mood. You know, great attitude. They're polite. They're happy. And that's why I like going to the malls at Christmas. So, um, as I said, it's Christmas time. And um, although it's not Thanksgiving, obviously this time of year gives us time to reflect and think about how lucky we are. We're lucky to have you guys and, and um, you know, uh, thankful to have you along for the ride. So, um, I kind of get off topic, didn't I? <laughs> uh, so that was Oso Pine, and yes, we were talking about the three-year-olds turning four and the important trajectory that we have planned for them, that I have planned for them. Uh, Cavill Hanover, another horse. This is a horse that we, listen, I would never sell yes for a third, three times is what he's worth. I would say three times what we paid for Cavill Hanover, yet Cavill Hanover is racing up in the backup class in a position I think he has a good shot. On, mon on, uh, on Monday, this is a good horse. Second and 53 and two, the fastest mile of his life. Clearly, he's only going to get better. This is another yes type situation. Yes, I bought him to race and be a good horse, but I bought him to be a real good four year old. And I think we have, we're on the cusp of having some really, really good horses here. Cavill Hanover raced fantastic last week. He's up a class, he's in tough, small field, but I expect him to do good again this week. A horse that I think you should probably watch on Boxing Day is Excellent Nation. Many of you will be saying, well, it's his first start. You know, you're just going to go easy. Yeah, I'm going to go easy, but don't kid yourself. If I can get to the winner's circle, he'll be standing in the winner's circle. I think Excellent Nation has got a ton of upside. This horse, another horse that spent some time in the stall. He's got a ton of muscle to put on, a ton of weight to put on, but he can do it along the way. Uh, this is a horse that I don't know what he's going to do, right? Those stake horses that are turning three in Ohio, they're, they're battle-tested. They're tough, tough horses. What do we do with Excellent Nation? So we'll see. Uh, I know his qualifier was super impressive. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with him until we find out what he is and what he isn't. There's a lot of room between where he is and where we're going to need to find out what he is. A lot of money to be made and a lot of room there. So, excellent nation. Excited to see him race on Boxing Day. Another horse I'm super excited to see. Sunshine's finest. Um, he's going to need some time, guys. And this is what I said the other day in the qualifying uh, report. This is a horse, and I joked about it, and I said, you know, I stayed laid up for the better part of a month when I got hurt. So, didn't do much. Kind of avoided anything. Uh, and I looked... As I said in my video, like Montgomery Burns, for those of you who don't get that, that's Simpsons, the old guy that looks like he's 700. Uh, I, I lost a lot of muscle, right? And I lost some weight. Um, and I had only been off inactive for a month. Sunshine's Finest spent the better part of a half a year almost in his stall, didn't he? Three, four, five, six months. You can't do that and then just expect him to come back. It's impossible. He lost all of his muscle. And as I said to James, James said, hey, he's a little flat the other day. Now, the track was hard, and they all had big last quarters. So his last quarter was 27 flat. Good for him, the fact that he could do that at all. But at the same time, don't expect too much from this horse. Not right away, at least. You know, if we're having the same conversation in six starts, okay, then we'll, then we'll talk. But it's going to take a while for Sunshine's Finest. He may never come back to what we expected him to be. But for him to be an active, useful racehorse, that's going to take some time. So uh, Sunshine's Finest is uh, racing on Boxing Day, eager to see how he's going to do. I suspect 
he's not going to uh, make a pile of money his first few starts, but uh, I'm eager to see what he's going to turn into because he really shouldn't be racing at all, should he? And truthfully speaking, as I said in my video, he's lucky to be alive. Uh, maybe we both are, but he's definitely lucky to be alive, and what he's overcome to make it back to the races is truly incredible, and um, I can't wait to see how he's going to turn out on the track. Uh, Road Tripper is a horse that I've protected forever and loved for a long time. He just doesn't look ready to go, does he? He was horrible the other day. Got a flat line in him. He's comfortable. Trotting as good as I've ever seen him. Just as slow as I've ever seen him, too. So we're going to see how he goes on Boxing Day. If he doesn't go good on Boxing Day, maybe we'll scoot him back down to the barn for a little more heavy training to get him back in shape. There's always that thin line, right? Too much training, you don't want him sore. Not enough training, he's not competitive. We need to find that that meaty curve, and um, I hope we can do that with Road Tripper, a horse that I, I, I love this horse, and uh, I expect him to come back, and I think he will. Uh, maintenance Man, I apologize for, for my partners and owners on Maintenance Man last night. The track was really hard at Flamborough, and I didn't know it would be so hard. When we sent the horse to Buffalo, uh, Sabrina had changed his shoes to race at, or, or to race in Batavia. Um, she knows the track better than me, and the horse raced good his first start. That was muddy. It uh, wasn't as hard, and he raced decent. Uh, then he was scratched. Then the races were canceled. So we brought him back here. He get here late on Thursday. Um, I looked at his shoes, and I wasn't really comfortable. I didn't think he'd be able to race like that. But at the same time, um, I wasn't sure he couldn't. So I uh, opted to leave the shoes on him he came back with track was hard his feet were sore and he just didn't want to race and he run so i'm angry that he did that but i'm going to give him a pass because that's my fault so i'll drive him his next start and we'll have the proper footwear on maintenance man cabernet talking about footwear everybody asked what the broken equipment is she lost a shoe lost a shoe in the race on an icy snowy track still finished second so good for her she is racing well very happy to see her racing well Arvika is 5-1 to one morning line, and I think picked to win or for second on the top of the program for uh, Monday evening. Had a great race last week. Another horse we made, speaking of footwear, we made some shoeing changes on her. She looked very, very good the other day. West 52nd. I know a lot of people are like, you know, geez, I wish James had a left with them. This is the one time I'll disagree. I'm glad James didn't leave with them. When we're talking about main maintenance of a horse, when we're talking about how we need to turn them into better four-year-olds, this horse here isn't as talented, and you guys know that, is, is yes, right? And we need to put a lot of weight and a lot of muscle on him, and we need to race him appropriately. And um, leaving out of the nine hole was not the way to do it. I'm glad James ducked him. He can't draw nine forever. It's two weeks in a row. You know, he draws three or four in that class, gets away second or third. He's in the winner's circle, I believe. So I'm glad that James drove him the way he drove him. And I think we all know this horse has shown when he come back. He can race here. He likes it here. And he's going to excel here. Last two races, his last quarter was 27-4. and four, Fastest two last quarters of his entire life. He's learning to be a better horse. Just, I know the nine hole, drawing the nine hole and taking back is frustrating. He said, well, he's got no shot. Well, White Tiger got away at the back last night, sixth or seventh. They went a big half a slower last half and I come and got them and if they had done that in West 50 seconds race who knows what he would have done also so um, a combination of being in the nine hole I think dreams drove him appropriately and he surely he can't drive nine again so uh, West 50 second as a horse to watch also another horse you may have lost track of because he disappeared last week uh, totally tacked her totally tacked her um, we scoped him maybe seven or eight starts ago he'd raced poorly once maybe six starts ago we scoped him there was a kind of couple of specks of blood but we felt we could treat him and make sure he was okay to race uh his last start he walked badly you saw that and there was a lot of blood so we put him on the lasex program and i schooled him in 58 and 3 the other day for jason at mohawk really happy with what i saw so i think totally tactor is ready to get back to work and do some damage we're going to have him on the lasex program for his next start which will be a week from today next sunday at flamborough he will race. Now we got a few other things. We obviously, yesterday I told everybody, I looked at the forecast and I said, this is going to be a fantastic day to train horses, to drain the babies. And it was. Now, first things first, we had 13 scratches 
The reason being some OCDs, some sickness, some splints, crowd, curbs. I'll go throw, this, throw through those quickly uh, with you. So the scratches were beef and cheddar. We castrated beef and cheddar uh, last week. Didn't want to train him on Saturday. Blue Monk had a big curb crowd. That's taken care of. The time off over the holidays will be great for that curb. Braymar, the operation to take that OCD out, was successful. Hello, Buck. What, you're working in your office? I'm doing my videos every week. <laughs> I am. I got to do videos for our clients every week. Yeah. yeah. Everybody say hi to Buck. This is the guy that shovels my driveway. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> shovels my driveway, makes sure everything stays uh, yeah. stays in order yeah, right. here in Guelph. Cool. All things go with the horses. Very good. Very good. Very Was good. Good. Some of the new ones. Yeah, our horse won last night at Mohawk. He raced really good. Good. Yeah. Good. We should have you down to the races one of these days. Well, sometime after New Year's. Absolutely. All Absolutely. Right. All right. Well, Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too. Well, we'll see you before that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Take I, care, bud. I didn't buy many toys this year. Oh, that's good because I got too many toys. Green, so too many toys. We're just getting something out. Yeah. Getting some green stuff. Canned goods. Huh? No, no. <laughs> well, yeah, I, did. I had one of my granddaughter, or my niece. One year they take, uh, they were building a new house, so they lived with us for three months in the apartment. I give her a, a brick. And she opened that up, looked at that. He's only what? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> anyway, take care. My buddy Buck came out the other day. at all the guys poor. He's like seventy-five years old. He had the whole driveway shoveled, all the walkway shoveled. I looked at him. I said, "He missed a spot." <laughs> No, Buck's the best. So uh, that's the type of people here on our street, and that's why I love living where I live. Um, he's just been a great guy since I moved in. And uh, any of you guys that come to the barn, you'll probably see him once in a while, drop by. Where were we at here? Bramer. So Bramer, uh, the operation went great for Bramer. Um, everything went perfect for him and Aguilar AM. Obviously, they're going to be off for a little bit. But everything was perfect. Brilliant Corners, his hawk blew up uh Friday, uh, we had it X scratched him, had it x-rayed, a few little floaters in there. So I don't know what the surgeon wants to do. Do we just let those settle or do you go in and take those out? Uh, it looks like a fragment broke apart. Now, do those settle? I, I don't know the answer to that. So I had sent a message to Natalie Cote, who's our surgeon at University of Guelph, uh, and I asked her, what are your thoughts on this? So she hasn't got back to me yet. She likely will this afternoon. So Brilliant Corners may also go and have that cleaned up. Uh, again, not a big deal. Now, he's not lame on it, but at some point you'd have to believe if it stayed big, he would be. So, uh, and, and he can't possibly be 100% when his hawk is 40% bigger than it's supposed to be. Uh, so Brilliant Corners, we'll clean that up. Nothing serious there. No issues there with him either. Broadway Roll had a splint, uh, two splints and a curb crowd. So I had the vet come in. Uh, we have another vet that works with McMaster Equine Clinic. Uh, her name is Angelica Bosenjack, and she does a great job with the cryo gun. Uh, so the cryo gun is, is literally a canister hooked up to a little gun and nitrogen. They nitrogen freeze those areas and it deadens them. So we, uh, Broadway Roll had two splints and a curb bothering a poor girl. So she's going to, the time off the holidays would be great for her also. No issues there. Lincoln Hanover was castrated two weeks ago and there was irritation in his scrotum area. So uh, we didn't go with him, didn't want to poke the bear, so to speak. Uh, Northern Blizzard was the only horse actually sick. He did a temperature of 103.2 on Friday. Now it was down to 100.3 on Saturday, but we weren't going to train the horse. So uh, he didn't go. At Glary M, as I said, the operation went fantastic for her. Round midnight was castrated immediately after the open house. You saw the show he put on all over the place, just being rude and ignorant. You get that. It, listen, Sunshine's Finest was the same way when he was a yearling. So uh, certainly no concerns there, but the castration was warranted. And uh, hopefully he comes forward after that. Royal Tyrone, we gelded him for the same reason, wandering all over the track, not paying attention to his work, just being stupid. So uh, we castrated him, set the mood. Uh, he had a splint crowd, I believe. He was very good. Surreal Love had a curb crowd after he looked so good in the open house and then still had a curb he was bite that was biting at him. So another horse I want to keep a very close eye on. Won my heart, Hanover had that curb crowd that she's had for a bit. It's just a tiny little... I don't know, even know if you'd call it a curve, but it was some swelling in the same area. The problem I had was it didn't dissipate. It was constant. So she had crowded it also, gave her the week off. So he had 13 off. The ones we went with were fantastic. I'll talk about them, talk about all the horses. I'm going to grade them all for you, every single one of them, in our yearling portion of the video. 
and uh, talk about their strengths and weaknesses. Now, there are some horses I'm going to continue to work on over the next two weeks. Not that many, really, to be honest. Let's roll on. I might take him over to Mohawk and train him. He struggles in the corners. Now, this is a horse that's going to have to figure out how to get around the corners because he's an Ohio bred. But for the time being, he wants to do his work. He's got a great attitude. He's not forging anymore. He just struggles a little bit in the turns, and he'll roll off. I find him better without the hobbles, so I might take him over to Mohawk and train him a few times over there. Uh, Rose Run Wanda. This filly was really lazy uh, and a bit sour the last two weeks, and I trained her hard on Saturday. I went a mile a real good. I'm not going to tell you how much I went. I went, I went a good mile with her on Saturday, but she finished up. The only problem was I really had to get after her. Really had to get after her to do her work, and I hope that that's a, a watershed moment for a real turning point in her career where she realizes that work's not that hard to do, and she's actually good at it when you put her in gear. She just needs to get into gear on her own. I can't get after her every week. War We Was Up again, another lazy bugger. Him and Adrenaline Rush are both on the list. Now, James said Adrenaline Rush seemed like the laziest horse he's ever sat behind, and then as they come around the last turn and straighten into the stretch, he said he was flying at the wire. So we're going to try and polish up those those strong points that finishing kick that he clearly has and work on those weaker points which was the third quarter of his training mile uh, and I don't know why he would really like that does he not like going through the last turn or going into the last turn is he just being lazy we'll work on him over the next little while try to tease me is really her and Wanda had had uh, poor attitudes the other day training and I'm really going to work on them Wanda seemed to have a real big kick on the end of it when I put her in gear um, as I said I don't want to have to get after her every week she was good this week. Let's see how she is next week. Try to tease me. You know, some of the horses did get tired on Saturday, but I want to see what they do when they get tired. You've heard me say this a million times last year. I want to see what they do when they get tired, and I don't like what I saw with Try to Tease Me. So for me, she's going to work very hard over the next 30 days because in under 30 days is when you start compiling that list for the February 12th sale. And don't let me don't don't take this as me saying she'll be in it don't take this as me saying she's a terrible horse she's not she can get polished up the same as every other horse but you know straight truth you know I don't like what I saw from her yesterday that could change it could change quite quickly we are going to make a few little shoeing adjustments on try to tease me see if we can get her into a position where she's comfortable and happy to do her work and she was not yesterday she did do her work she trained good the mile she went was acceptable just the way she did it kind of bothered me a little bit. So we'll see how she comes. And then War We Was Up, another horse. A little bit lazy, but we'll work with him. We'll keep working with him. As I said to Margot the other day, one of my partners on the horse, I don't mind when they're lazy. I hate when they have their ears on their neck and they're sour and lazy. That's a real problem. But again, even that is a problem overcoming. Sunshine's Finest was a sour, lazy horse at December of his yearling year. So there's hope for anybody. But we need to start working on them and getting them polished up now. And now everybody says, oh, you have lots of time. No, you don't. You have lots of time to get them to the races. But you don't have lots of time to curb these bad attitudes, these bad habits, and then start polishing them up into the summer. No, you don't have a lot of time. We do not have a lot of time. We have an appropriate amount of time. So those are five horses for very different reasons we want to work with. Let's roll on. Just trying to heighten his confidence, much like we did with Carry Big Stick. You guys didn't get to see it because we weren't droning, but Carrie Big Stick was horrible for two weeks. And then he got better and better and better and better and better. And now what I see is a horse that really wants to do his work well. I was very impressed with uh, Carrie Big Stick over the last 10 days. And this is what I want to see the horses. This is the example I want, uh, I need from, from all the horses. And then the one that's set by Carrie Big Stick was, yeah, it's okay to be ignorant and sour and not want to do your work. But at some point, I need to know, are you going to? And Carry a Big Stick just looked so, so, so good over the last 10 days. And this is what I want to see from Let's Roll On, Rose Run Wanda, War We Was Up, Try to Tease Me, and Adrenaline Rush. These five horses are going to go to school for the next two weeks or three weeks. And uh, the principal's office, they don't want to be in the principal's office, but they're going to be going to school for the next three weeks and we're gonna make sure we find out are you going to be a racehorse for the stable.ca or are you gonna find your way into the Ohio sale in February now in fairness I don't think you're going to see many horses on this list on that list I don't see any problems here the only concerns I have are with two so far Wanda you know, was this, as I said, was this a turning point in her career the other day? Is she now going to come forward on her own without me chasing her? 
quite possibly she could try to tease me. Are you going to continue with your attitude? Or are you going to change your mind and say, you know, uh, I'm actually actually a beautiful trotter and good at her work, but she needs to want to do it. So those are two horses I'm keeping a very close eye on. But at the same time, two horses that did their work yesterday just need them to do it better. So that's the opening. That's the horses, the racing, the horses that were scratched yesterday. I told you the horses we're going to be working on diligently over the next two, three weeks, James and I particularly. And we'll be back in a minute. I'm going to talk about all the babies. I'm going to give them grades. I'm going to give you a top 15 list from yesterday. Now, again, the only thing about these top 15 lists, you're going to see they're very fluid. A lot of horses that weren't on it are on it. A horse that I don't even know if he made the top 15 list this week, he tops the 15 list this week. So um, we'll get right into it. I'll be back in a minute. We're going to talk about all the babies. We're going to have a top 15 list, and I'll explain to you why. Right back in a minute.